when in trouble, try to censor your opponents. This is basically the viewpoint of the left. And the idea is you have to agree with them on every score or you yourself are some sort of deep-seated, deep-rooted fascist. This is apparently what I'm learning now because yesterday I tweeted that Disney is putting a same-sex kiss in the brand new movie Lightyear. And this is the new Buzz Lightyear film. It is directed at small children who like the Toy Story series. And they've made a very big deal out of this. I mean, it's not like Disney is not treating this as historic. They are treating this as historic. And this is just another great example of the left doing something that is deliberately provocative. And then when you notice them saying, well, it's not happening. And they say, well, it is because you just said it is. And they say, well, it is happening and it's good. And if you notice, you're a bigot. And that is the idea here. So I noticed, which according to the left means that I'm a bigot, and I said, maybe you should take it under advisement that the sexual values that the left teaches are not the ones you want your kids to learn from Lightyear the movie, which doesn't seem all that controversial to me, frankly. It seems like, you know, the, the sort of traditional norm, male-female couple producing children being what is in children's movies, I, I'm not sure why that is supposed to change or why it must change or why it's necessary to teach small children the prevailing sexual values of the left. Why, why, is, that, why is that a thing? That is necessary. I mean, there will be plenty of time for that later on in life when kids are fully capable of understanding the moral values and judgments that are implied by sexual behavior, for example, or by the choices that you choose to make in your relationships. But doing that with small kids and then pretending that, for example, same-sex marriage and heterosexual marriage are completely equivalent in every way under natural law, morally, evolutionarily. You're opening a can of worms, in other words, that doesn't need to be opened in children's film. And Disney knows this, which is why they are doing this. If you notice this, however, the left now suggests that this is a violation of freedom of speech. Because apparently what they mean by freedom of speech is you must approve everything that we do. If I say, listen, you're a parent, you want to take your kids to see Lightyear? You're prerogative. Now, you're a parent, you can do what you want. I'm not taking my kids to see Lightyear. If I say that, apparently this now makes me a cancel culture specialist, or this turns me into a violator of the First Amendment, or it's principle. That, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm not calling for Lightyear to be banned. Right? This isn't Saudi Arabia. This is in China. I'm not saying that it should be banned or that you can't, it, it should never be played in theaters or anything like that. I'm saying that you as a parent get to decide what sort of values you wish to teach your kids rather than the executives at Disney who have suggested that they wish to deliberately indoctrinate your kids with LGBT values. They say this openly. Latoya Ravenu, who's an executive producer there, she said they have a not at, the direct quote, not at all secret gay agenda that they wish to insert in their children's programming. You have the, the head of Disney literally saying that she has a non-binary kid and a transgender child, and she wishes to expand the roster of such characters in children's programming until it encompasses something like 50% of all of the characters. So if you notice that, apparently you're bad and also violative of free speech. But if people shout you down and say that you're not allowed to have any opinion on this sort of stuff, that is not violent. I'm not saying you can't have an opinion. You can have an opinion. I'm saying your opinion is wrong. You are saying that if we express our opinion, then we should be silenced. And this, unfortunately, is the way that our, our culture is currently constructed. It's an uneven construction. People on the right very rarely try to actually silence people on the left. People on the left routinely try to do it with people who are on the right by suggesting they're fascist and they must be stopped. And that, that, is the, that is the goal here. And so this holds true on virtually every front. This is particularly true with regard to climate change, where it has been decided that if you violate the precepts that the left has been promulgating, then this means that you have to shut up. Now, here's the thing. The rubric of climate change denialism that they like to push all the time is that you are a climate change denier if you say that climate change is happening and also that human beings are very good at adaptation and will figure it out. Apparently, this amounts to climate change denialism, even though, by the way, that's what pretty much everyone who knows the science agrees is what's going to happen, is that there will be problems associated with climate change, that economic growth created by free markets and free trade and economic laissez-faire liberalism is going to wildly outpace the amount of damage done by climate change over the course of the next century, and that we will then have money in areas of the world that currently don't have money to spend in helping to solve some of the more brutal side effects of climate change. If you mention this sort of stuff according to the left, this means you ought to be censored. So now you have the Wall Street Journal editorial board today on climate change censorship. Here's what they write. Progressives first demanded that social media platforms silence critics of climate alarmism. Now, White House National Climate Advisor Gina McCarthy wants them to censor content on the, for, on, on the cost of a force-fed green energy transition. A few years ago, Facebook enlisted third-party fact-checkers to review news stories about climate. That didn't satisfy Democratic senators who held about a loophole for opinion pieces. Facebook then began appending fact-checks to op-eds, including by our contributors Bjorn Lomberg and Stephen Koonin, that criticized apocalyptic climate models and studies. The goal was to restrict readership. Now, what's amazing is that even the left is starting to come around on this. There's an entire article at Vox.com recently talking about how the world is not going to end because of climate change. 
Ezra Klein had an entire article over at the New York Times talking about how the alarmism that causes environmentalists not to want to have kids is overstated. So it only took them a few years of propagandizing on behalf of the world is about to end and the earth is about to boil to back off that position. And if you didn't take that position, they tried to censor you at the time. But says the Wall Street Journal, progressives are moving on to censorship phase two, which is shutting down debate over climate solutions. Now it's not so much denying the problem, McCarthy said in an Axios interview last Thursday. What the industry is now doing is seeding doubt about the costs associated with green energy and whether they work or not. Ms. McCarthy cited the week-long power outage in Texas in February 2021. The first thing we read in the paper was that the blackouts occurred because of those wind turbines, she said. That became the mantra. Well, actually, most of the media blamed climate change and fossil fuels. But as it turns out, the flex capacity, the flex power produced by windmills is not nearly enough to supply energy costs. You can't cover the energy gap when the pipes freeze up. The Wall Street Journal pointed out that gas fire plants couldn't make up for the wind shortfall despite running all out. And then some of those went down too. McCarthy doesn't want to admit the inconvenient truth that renewable energy sources are making the grid increasingly unreliable. Comparing fossil fuel companies to big tobacco, she then complained that dark money is being used to fool the public about the benefits of clean energy. We need the tech companies to really jump in, she said, because highlighting the cost of green energy is equally dangerous to denial because we have to move fast. So if you assess their policy and you say these policies are not likely to work and they're going to be very expensive, she's now saying that's climate change denial. This is what the left does. They take a core and then they expand it outward to encompass everything we don't like. They do this on on nearly every topic. They'll take an argument like you are a climate change denier if you say the climate is not changing because of, of human activity. And then they will expand that out to include everyone who agrees that human activity is at least partially responsible for climate change. We just disagree with your solutions. This is what they do all the time. They do it on January 6th too, right? You could have condemned January 6th. You could have thought that Donald Trump was saying things that were not true between November 4th and January 6th, all of that. But you voted for Trump, didn't you? And that means that you are a January 6th insurrectionist. They always take the the outline case and then they make this the rubric under which they absorb pretty much everybody. Merely pointing out technical limitations on lithium-ion batteries could be disinformation, according to the Wall Street Journal. Asked whether climate disinformation posed a threat to public health, McCarthy replied, absolutely, while adding hilariously, President Biden doesn't focus on, and neither do I, on bashing fossil fuel companies. The Axios interviewer smiled and nodded along. That, of course, is absurd. Joe Biden literally sent a letter claiming that fossil fuel companies were responsible for oil shortages right now, which is the dumbest thing in the world. So, you know, all of this attempt to cut down on dissent is pretty commonplace on the left, unfortunately, right now, all the way up to and including a researcher paid by the Department of Homeland Security calling Tucker Carlson a stochastic terrorist. The idea, again, being that Tucker Carlson disagrees with you. Therefore, he is essentially like somebody who bombs buildings. And so he must be stopped. If you call somebody a stochastic terrorist, the obvious implication is they must be restricted and censored. Here is a DHS researcher talking about this. Have you been uh, paid uh, taxpayer dollars by DHS to study Tucker Carlson as a stochastic terrorist? No. Okay. Has that been a feature of your research? Have you researched Tucker Carlson? I mean, informally, my own for my own edification, I have. Sufficient to your to your to to the point that you are willing to say on 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 Twitter that he's a stochastic terrorist for the Buffalo massacre, right? I'm willing to say it on congressional record. Yes. He's a stochastic terrorist, right? The, the, The goal of the left is to characterize everybody they disagree with as responsible for actual violence or human pain and suffering, and therefore they must be stopped. Therefore, they must be silenced, which is, of course, why you saw Twitter yesterday apparently mulling the possibility of banning libs of TikTok. Now, libs of TikTok keeps coming up because all libs of TikTok does, and I know the woman behind libs of TikTok, very nice lady, all libs of TikTok does is take crazy people on TikTok and put them on Twitter. That's all. People voluntarily post their videos on TikTok in which they demonstrate signs that they are crazy. And they do it for the clicks. They do it because they want attention. And then libs of TikTok makes them more, spotlights them and gives them more attention. And they say, well, not that kind of attention. That's not the kind of attention I wanted. I wanted you to celebrate my transition into a genderqueer unicorn. Why aren't you Why aren't you just celebrating? Libs of TikTok, it's a hate site. Well, all libs of TikTok does, all she does is just post the stuff and point out what people are saying. So this means that Many Twitter employees were now considering the possibility of trying to ban the account. According to the New York Post, the woman behind the controversial libs of TikTok Twitter account says she has obtained internal Slack messages from Twitter employees indicating the social media company is thinking about banning her. The libs of TikTok creator, identified by the Washington Post as Chaya Rachik of Brooklyn, New York, published a Substack post on Monday, which included screenshots of what she claims are internal chats among Twitter employees. 
The Slack messages, which appear to have been exchanged on Monday, purportedly show one Twitter employee expressing frustration with management for not imposing an outright ban on libs of TikTok. The account has 1.2 million followers. That is largely because Taylor Lorenz, the worst journalist in America, tracked down the person behind libs of TikTok and decided to dox her by publishing a link to her address and all of this. The left has been pushing the idea that libs of TikTok is quote, quote unquote going to get somebody killed because libs of TikTok is committing the grave sin of taking public information and making it more public. The same employee added, I mean, we successfully deplatformed Trump. I don't think deplatforming of libs of TikTok is going to cause a max exodus, but I guess it may not be in our fiduciary interest to enact a ban on a high profile account right now. The employee was reacting to a Twitter post on Sunday by Ari Drennan, who works for Media Matters. Ah, there it is. The worst organization in America. Drennan said, Chaya Rachik of Libs of TikTok is going to get somebody killed. She attached screenshots showing posts by Libs of TikTok about a public library in the San Francisco Bay Area that was hosting a drag queen story event for children. The other employee who advocated for the ban replied, trans people are being targeted for genocidal violence during Pride Month. By the way, the only people that I can see who have actually been targeted en masse over the course of the last six weeks are um, pro-life clinics. Pro-life clinics have been firebombed repeatedly over the course of the last month and a half. The media refused to even cover that. But apparently, Libs of TikTok posts a tweet, and this is a deep and abiding threat to trans people all over the United States. Later in the thread, the Twitter employee who expressed caution about banning Libs of TikTok apologized for appearing to downplay the perceived threat against transgender people. I apologize. I was not speaking from my own perspective, but applying a commentary on how leadership has behaved recently, the employee wrote, I could have phrased that better and will be more conscious in future messages. So there is an attempt to, to go after Libs of TikTok again. And then Chai Rachik pointed out, that she'd been getting a bunch of death threats, which she has. Libs of TikTok said, I've now received about a dozen threats after radical leftists accused me of being a domestic terrorist extremist. Twitter has not removed any of the accounts who sent the threat. Elon Musk, who is still in the process of buying Twitter, replied, why? And tagged Twitter. Just a, f a little bit later, those accounts were removed or blocked. So again, the, and what did this prompt? This is the best part. What did this prompt? It prompted anger, spasms of apoplexy from the worst journalist in America, Taylor Lorenz, who appeared recently on MSNBC to complain about how she was being targeted, about how her life was so difficult because she targets others, and now people are targeting her. And she cried about it, literally cried about it on national TV. And now she says that it's really bad that Elon Musk is, uh, is noticing that Libs of TikTok is being targeted for violence by people. So Taylor Lorenz tweeted, of course, of course. And then she linked to another article attacking Libs of TikTok and wrote, LGBTQ activists have called out Libs of TikTok's escalating attacks on the community in recent weeks. And then Lorenz subsequently shared a Twitter thread alleging that an original threat, which was a, pop, a pipe bomb threat, was sarcasm and a joke. And then tweeted, all the conservatives speaking with Musk on Twitter are going to make Twitter a dangerous place. So, so glad that, that the Washington Post picked up Taylor Lorenz, the worst journalist in America, gets very angry when anyone else complains about death threats. But she herself, she's the real victim. The battle for the culture is heating up. We here at The Daily Wire are making some big moves. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, because you're not going to want to miss a single moment.